So hello everybody and welcome here in this next episode of, of CPE Bach in Pieces. In case you, this is your first time here at Unauthentic Sound, my name is Wim Winters and this channel is all about sharing the beauty of music from Bach to Beethoven and also discovering new and maybe even surprising perspectives from within that strong line of tradition that hopefully can inspire you as a musician or as a listener. No better way than to hit the subscribe button if you would like to stay on top of everything we are doing. So today is the next episode in CPE Bach in Pieces. We are going to talk about the term Clavier, which is highly debated in fact. And if you have not seen previous episodes of CPE Bach in Pieces, I will link some episodes here on screen. You can click on that if you would like to know more about that. We are actually reading together, I am with you, the book of CPE Bach, his Versuch über die wahre Art als Klavier zu spielen, or in English, the true art of playing keyboard instruments. And the, the, trying to, by close to reading this book, again come to a close understanding of what this great master had to say about keyboard playing. So, and we have had some episodes about the history of the book, also the life of CPE Bach it himself, and so we are coming now to the actual text, which is for both books of so volume 1 and 2, it has a preface and an introduction. So let's start with the preface, and we're hitting right in the first sentence, or well, it's actually a foreword. In the first sentence, we hitting a kind of problem um, in a way that the term clavier, of course, is today seen as a generic term for all keyboards, boards, which partly is true. But when reading letters and diving into more specific content of that time, uh, one cannot escape the feeling that for those people in the 18th century, that term maybe was generic and I don't know if that's the same for the period of J.S. Bach as it was later in the 18th century but um, it kind of is always has been clear for those people whether they were talking about actually the keyboard as um, a term that serves for all types of keyboards and or it was just the clavichord because that was actually the second um, or perhaps even the first meaning of the word. It's highly debated today and we're going to make some videos about clavichord and harpsichord to have the hot word out if the music from Bach for Bach uh, written or the, the taught from, with, from the texture of the clavichord, the harpsichord. And today we have a general meaning that it doesn't matter too much. It's just keyboard music. And who am I to say that it wasn't or that it isn't? It's not certainly the topic of this video. We are going to see what CPE Bach has to write about this. And um, that's interesting because it makes a difference. Because a clavichord and a harpsichord, they are two different types of instruments and we tend to forget that. The texture and the language of both instruments they're quite different and so it is important I think to research this not with the purpose on saying which instrument is quote-unquote the best or uh, you know that's at the end it's up for you and for me to decide what we like most and what we think is best or what we should like to do and here is a wasp coming to inter interrupt with this episode uh, hopefully not debating the term clavier with me because I would lose Anyway, so it's up to you as a musician to take the end responsibility, and it's not a big word, responsibility, to decide what uh, what instrument you're going to play on. And so it's far from me and from my attention to say, because I'm playing a lot of music, on music until now, on clavichord, what you should and what you should not do. But it, it is interesting, it shouldn't prevent us from looking to the facts. And CPE Bach is really, really clear on this, in fact. So in 1753, he wrote his book a little bit earlier, as we saw in some one of the previous episodes. He starts his foreword to part one with actually saying keyboard instruments. I'm reading now from the Mitchell translation, 1949 have many merits, but are beset by just as many difficulties. And then he continues, that's for another uh, video, another episode. So, keyboard instruments, we must actually go a little bit um, 
further to the introduction now already and reading what Emmanuel Bach has to say about keyboard instruments. What does that mean? And he is very clear on that. In Alinea number 11 of his introduction to part 1, he says, Before we proceed to rem um, remedy these faults, and that's of course um, uh, referring to some previous passages, with well-grounded instructions, something remains to be said about keyboard instruments. So, here he goes. Of the many kinds, some of which remain a little known because of defects, others because they are not yet in general use. There are two which have been most widely acclaimed, and that is the harpsichord and the clavichord. So by saying that, we can assume it's actually a fact that for Immanuel Bach, in a general way, the term clavichord, the term harpsichord, excuse me, was actually meaning all types of keyboard. Again, they must have been very clear about it, understanding what they meant in true letters and something like that, but here it is, the term clavier for CPE Bach is in this context of this book, so referring also to the title of his work, referring to both harpsichord and clavichord, and actually to all keyboardish instruments. He talks about the Bogen clavier as well, but not here. So the main types of keyboard instruments are harpsichord and clavichord. And then he is going to uh, uh, detail that. It's really interesting. So the former, which is the harpsichord, is used in ensembles and the latter, the clavichord, alone. Then he continues, we come back to that, then he continues, the more recent pianoforte, when it is sturdy and well-built, has many fine qualities, although its touch must be carefully worked out, a task which is not within difficulties. It sounds well by itself and in small ensembles, yet I hold that the good clavichord, except for its weaker tone, shares equally in the attractiveness of the pianoforte and in addition features the vibrato and portato which is a translation actually in English from uh, the Bebung und das Tragen der Töne, we can demonstrate that at the clavichord once, which I produce by means of added pressure after each stroke. It is at the clavichord that the keyboardist may be most exactly evaluated. So, interesting here is A, that in the generic term clavier, for, I mean, the meaning for all types of, of uh, keyboard, that's, of, that's here very clear, the opinion also, or the, the definition that Emmanuel gives. Clavier means, um, in this context, all types of keyboard instruments, and most important of them in 17, uh, of that group in 1753 is the harpsichord and the clavichord. The pianoforte has its qualities, but is not yet uh, accepted as it of course, history would tell would later be the case. And the second interesting thing is that he designates two groups, harpsichord for orchestral playing and clavichord for solo music. Now, before you, maybe as a harpsichord player, become very mad at me, it's not what I'm saying, it's what C.P. Bachem is saying. And I know today we have a different practice, partly maybe because of... of, of a great player like Wanda Landowska in the beginning of the century advocated the harpsichord so much, probably because he wanted to have an instrument on the large uh, stage. That tradition perhaps was more than we considered to be continued by people like Gustav Leonard. So they didn't start with harpsichord. It was a practice that that was already um, took that was taking place. Um, in a kind of battle, so to say, between Landowski and Dolmetsch, Landowska won. Dolmetsch was a guy, great musicologist and clavichord builder, who of course mainly advocated the clavichord. So it, it is also for that from that period that the English term uh, or translation clavier in clavichord was replaced by keyboard. But that's all. Uh, not saying that you should change what you are doing. It's just the fact that for C.P.E. Bach the solo works were more dedicated, more suitable for clavichord, and that the harpsichord was the orchestral instrument for ensemble playing and, and accompaniment. And that's something you can read until end of 19th century. Even people like Hugo Riemann, who in his uh, encyclopedian works, he wrote so much, 
is writing about the harpsichord, the same thing, that it was an instrument with a sharp tone that was excellent for keeping the orchestra together and giving the movement and the tempo, which is, of course, what, what the good continual player is doing. So, yeah, that's a fact that CPE Bach writes to us, and it's not more than that for this video. So, I think that alone is a very important fact, again, to close this video with, because that's not the practice that we see today. Um, again, not pointing to someone or to somebody, and I'm not telling here to tell you what to do or what, to, what not to do, but today's practice, that's something we can say, is that if you would estimate the presence of the clavichord in only recordings of solo music of that time, for CPE Bach, yes, a little bit before it becomes much less, a little bit later than CPE Bach, it is almost non-existent. So that might be something to think about, and that's the only reason for these videos, that we reflect, think about, and then move on with our lives. So, that was it for this episode. Again, if this is your first time here on Authentic Sound, I'd love to have you subscribed. We are playing music from Bach to Beethoven a little bit before and a little bit later, even going to music of our time, written in earlier style. We are heading for a new series of uh, projects with Costas, so in September 2017. And um, I'd like to have you join the Authentic Sound community in no better way than to hit that subscribe button. And then we see each other very soon again. Bye.